This episode has been brought to you by JustInform.com. So, a lot of people are comparing Democrats to progressives. And that conversation has caused a lot of controversy on social media platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, and what have you. They look at the running, successful runnings and primaries of candidates such as Ocasio-Cortez, Andrew Gillum, Benjamin Jealous, and they say, oh, there could be a groundswell of progressives taking over the Democratic Party. Well, to that point, someone who has been commenting, I would say very boldly about this issue is none other than Fox News' Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson did a segment where he talked about Democrats and progressives, and I want to share it with you. The Democratic Party is transforming before our eyes. The party of Tom Foley and Tip O'Neill and even Bill Clinton is long gone. Pretty soon the party of Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer will be history too. In its place is emerging something new, the party of Andrew Gillum. Gillum is the mayor of Tallahassee. As of last night, he's the Democratic nominee for governor of Florida. Here's some of what he believes. We want to replace ICE uh, with the Department of Justice, uh, okay. so, an entity that has not been tarnished in the same way as, as ICE has. So, so again, he, so that, he, he says you want to abolish ICE, you say you want to replace it, that's basically the same. In the state of Florida, I also believe that health care ought to be treated like a right and not a privilege. Yeah. Do you think the president should be impeached? I absolutely do. I think he's, he's already incriminated himself by interfering mm -hmm. with the Department of Justice, firing Jim Comey, of whom I'm no fan of, uh, but basically obstructing justice. The state of Florida has long been considered moderate politically. It's a vital swing state, obviously, during presidential elections. Many pundits last night and today, even Democrats, have been quick to dismiss Andrew Gillum's chances this fall. He's too far out, they're saying. He's too much of an outsider. That's absurd. They have no idea what they're talking about. They were embarrassingly wrong in the last election, and they have learned precisely nothing since. Amazingly, they're still in the predictions business when they should be selling aluminum siding or doing something useful. Ignore them. Of course Andrew Gillum could win. You ought to be taking his candidacy very seriously. Candidacies like his are erupting in a lot of places right now. Okay, so let's stop it right there. He goes in further to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, issues concerning the Florida race. But this segment is not about the Florida race. It's about what Tucker Carlson said about the Democratic Party and about progressives. Tucker Carlson has it wrong. See, I don't believe that the Democrats, the neoliberals, the entrenched establishment, the elites of the Democratic Party, the actual people that run the Democratic Party. And I'm not talking about every single Democrat and I'm not talking about every single Democratic politician, but the elites who are in charge of the party, who Tucker Carlson referred to as Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, those types. Yes, Nancy. Madam, Republicans say that one of the things this defeat shows is that democratic socialism is ascendant in your party. Are they right about that? No, they're not. They're, it's ascendant in that district, perhaps, uh, but I, I, I don't accept any characterization of our party presented by the Republicans. I don't think for a second that they're not tuned in to what's happening when someone with progressive values wins a race. I think they're more than tuned in. But I think what they're doing is they're playing this game where don't mention it. Or when you do mention it, take a crap all over it. Democratic socialism is ascendant in your party. Are they right about that? No, they're not. See, it's a mind game where if they give it no legitimacy, well, pretty much most of corporate media will follow suit. They won't give it legitimacy either. Get where I'm going? There is no way that Nancy Pelosi's, the elites, the Chuck Schumer's of the world, the Tom Perez's of the world, these people within the Democratic Party, there is no way, you cannot convince me, Tucker Carlson, that these people are not concerned when people like Joe Crawley lose their spot at the table. When the average run-of-the-mill, corporate donation taken, uh, follow anyone, vote blue any who, line fundraising extraordinaires, because that's really what makes you prominent within the Democratic Party, is how much money you raise for the party. Don't tell me for a second that they don't wince when an Ocasio-Cortez defeats a Joe Crawley. When an Andrew Gillum from the back comes up and takes 
the primary for the Democratic Party. Don't give me that they don't know this. When Benjamin Jealous in my own state of Maryland, no political experience comes in and decimates the field, so to speak. People who have been entrenched for years and decades. Oh, no. They would have to be, like, I think we give them, we got to give them more credit or less credit. More credit. See, to think that they're just not paying attention and they doubt that this is going to be serious, I think that is, I, I, I'm not sure how you, how you place that. Is that giving them credit or taking credit away? See, I think it's strategy, it's craftsmanship, it's gamesmanship for them to pretend that there's nothing to see here. Progressives are the lifeblood of the Democratic Party. The Democrats cannot win an election without progressives. Let's just make that plain and simple. No progressive had to hire a, a robocall or freaking uh, hill b uh, bots on Twitter in order to get a message out. Progressives don't need to be paid to speak truth or to challenge the establishment. Now, no disrespect to all of the people that came out for the uh, Hillary Clinton, the March for Women, and the, the, the hats, the pussy hat thing. No disrespect to you. No, no, no disrespect. Fact of the matter is, progressives have been coming out for all types of issues, a long grocery list of issues way before it became popular. And, and when it ceases to be popular, sort of like DACA, no one talks about now, it remains in the forefront. So like I said, the progressive wing, and the reason why I'm saying it's the wing is because it's to the left. They say they're for the left. I think they're actually Republican light, a lot of the Democrats that we deal with. Even they're waking up and they're realizing that they cannot win if they don't move to the actual left. Doug Jones, now the United States Senator from the great state of Alabama. And in November, as we organize and mobilize, we know what is at stake. Medicare for all is at stake, so let's use our power. Protecting our dreamers is at stake. Let's use our power. Voting rights are at stake. Let's use our power. Women's reproductive rights, climate change, and common sense gun laws are at stake. Let's use our power. In this moment, it is critically important that we speak truth. It is critically important that we speak truth. Candidates like Kamala Harris adopting more progressive stances. Cory Booker adopt, adopting more progressive stances. Kristen Gillibrand adopting more progressive stances. This is all, all of it, all of that that they're doing, all of this adoption now of progressive issues, policies, are a result of an active, progressive environment. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. So when Tucker Carlson says he doesn't think the Democrats are paying enough attention, they're paying enough attention. Do you think these corporate neoliberals would be adopting progressive policies? That, that endanger their corporate sponsors on their own? Come on, man. What did Bush say? There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. I don't think that Tucker Carlson's food. I think he knows what the time is. So, uh, is there, in regards to are the progressives taking over the party, that's the real question, right? No, they're not taking over the party. They're taking over the party. Superdelegates will be gone. Wouldn't be, a limit, wouldn't be limited. They'd be out. They wouldn't reverse the idea of not taking PAC money. They, well, we're not taking PAC money. Then they said we're taking it two months later. That would have never, that would have never happened. Once they made that move in that direction, that most of Americans feel is the direction for the country to go, they would have stayed there. These are just reality. This is just what's happening. So no, the progressives are not taking over the party. 
if they were taking over the party, there would be an investigation into the election, the primary, not the general, the primary election of the Democratic Party. And until said time that those things take place, there, is, there has been no progressive takeover. What there has been is an insurgence, insurgence of progressives and pressure from progressives placed on the Democratic Party establishment, which has rendered or which has caused them to make certain moves that they wouldn't normally make. So if you are a progressive who's active on social media, if you are a progressive that's active with causes that matter, well, this is, well, hell, this bud's for you, because you made this happen.